So what is the best value camera, the best bang for your buck camera that is on the market today? In my humble opinion anyway, it is the little ZV E10 from Sony that you're looking at right now. Let's talk about it. So anyone familiar with me or my channel, this is going to come as no surprise, but I figured I would make this video for those of you who haven't gotten to know the ZV-E10 very well. This camera punches way above its price point. And let's just talk about it. Let's talk about the 4K video. What we have here is really great 4K because it's downsampled from 6K. There's no pixel binning, there's no line skipping. It is a fantastic image, very crispy, very nice. And that's because of that downsampling using the full sensor, especially in 24P. There is a tiny crop in 30P, but I always use 24 and uh, there is no crop in the 24P. Also in all video modes is the eye tracking autofocus. You don't see that a lot at this price point. And it also has tracking object tracking in general, which works fantastically well. You can go over here, you can come over here, no matter where you go, you are going to be in focus. Did I go through the, no, I'm still in focus. I thought maybe I had breached the minimum focusing distance of this lovely Sigma 16 mm f 1.4. We'll get into lenses in a few seconds. It also has 120 frames per second in 1080 for slow motion. I like to record the slow motion, put it on a 4K timeline, upscale the footage and export it that way. And it looks great to my eyes. And then you get that buttery smooth Peter McKinnon hair blown in the wind slow motion that we all desire. It has a bunch of Sony picture profile modes, including S-Log 2, 3 and HLG and HLG 3. So right now I am using HLG3. I apply a lot later on and it gives me the most dynamic range I can get out of this very capable sensor. Yes, this sensor is a few years old, but it's been optimized for this camera and uh, using things like HLG3 gives you a nice bit of dynamic range to work with. And the footage coming out of it definitely rivals some of Sony's full frame cameras like my a7 III and an a7C that I compared against this camera as well. This camera can hold up very nicely against the big boys. It has a full articulating screen a 360 degree rotating screen so you can see yourself while you're filming yourself and that I think is pretty important I used to film on the a7 III and I found it to be very difficult to use I was always running to the back of the camera to see how the footage turned out now I can just look over here to the right see my pretty face and go ah look at that eye tracking autofocus still in focus still handsome what do you want? It also has a mic jack with good preamps. So I'm taking this wireless mic right here. It says little wind muff, little Don King fur sticking out. That is going straight into the camera over there. And it has a headphone port to go along with that as well. So you can monitor your audio ahead of time. Make sure you have all your levels, everything correct. So you don't get any nasty surprises when you go to edit your footage. It also has some helpful features for people just starting out with cameras, like an easy button layout where you can switch between photos, videos, and slow motion just at the press of a button. It also has something called product showcase mode where you can show something to the camera. It will lock onto it, take it down, and then the camera comes back to your beautiful face. Now for me, you'll notice it didn't leave my face because I don't have product showcase mode on. See, because I'm talking with my hands, I don't want it to lock onto my hands and lose focus. I keep it on the eye tracking. So I have the best of both worlds. When I want product showcase mode, press the button, it'll work. When I don't want it on, here it is, and whatever goes in front of the screen, it won't matter. It'll stick to my face like a jellyfish. It also has something called background defocus, where you can press a button and the background will go blurry, press another button and the background will be clear, but that will depend on your lens. It's basically just a manipulation of aperture, shutter speed, and ISO, and you can do that yourself. So once you learn how to use your camera, you won't be using that button much, but it's nice at the very beginning to have something to help you along. And what about the drawbacks? The major complaints people have about this camera is the lack of stabilization and the rolling shutter. But let me show you something, watch this. This is the footage run through something called Catalyst Browse. It is Sony's free software that if your camera can record gyroscopic data, then you can use that program, smooth out your footage so it looks like a gimbal, even though you don't have a gimbal. And this little camera has gyroscopic data that is recorded. 
pretty fantastic. And the rolling shutter, as you can see, is mitigated greatly. That means lessened, I think. Now, when it comes to photos, if you pair this with a really nice lens, like I have the Sigma 16mm f1.4, you're gonna get lovely pictures, nice blurry background, Sigma 30, 56. There are a lot of affordable lenses for this camera to get you amazing shots. And with the 24 megapixel sensor, you can print those pretty large. I mean, uh, 24 megapixels has been a standard for many years as to people who wanna print their photos a decent size. And let's not forget about the burst rate, 11 frames per second, which is a better than a lot of cameras. My full frame a7 III only does 10. The new a7 IV that has not yet been released only does 10 frames per second. This thing, 11 frames per second with the mechanical shutter. And when it comes to photography, I actually found out that I love using this camera. It is my favorite street photography camera because it's so small and discreet. Nobody bats an eyelash. Plus the reach with this thing, because, because it's an APS-C crop sensor, in terms of full frame terms, look at this. This is an 85 millimeter F1.8 for my Sony a7 III full frame. I put this on that camera and it turns into about 125 millimeters. Now, because I like to stand off in the distance like a creep and nobody can, I just don't like being judged. You know, I have a fragile ego, so I like standing away from the action, taking a photo. Can you guys even hear me with this train? So that's it. I just wanted to tell you that if you want to go take great photos and videos, but you don't want to break the bank, the ZV-E10 will give you excellent results as long as you learn how to use it properly. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe if you haven't already, and uh, don't forget to leave a comment, ask me a question. Now, if you don't mind, I'm going to do my favorite thing with the ZV-E10 and go on a little photo walk. Thanks for watching. See ya. Bye-bye.